Okay, we have this probability density function, 3 over 32 times the quantity of 4 minus x squared, as long as you're between minus 2 and 2. Uh, if you're not told, assume that what you have is a probability density function. And what we're asked to do here is find the standard deviation. Um, the graph of this function isn't necessary to find the standard deviation. I just want you to, to see what it looks like. The function is 0 so long as you are um, away from the interval from minus 2 to 2. So the function is 0, more than 2, 0, less than 2. But between negative 2 and 2, it becomes alive. It becomes this parabola that opens down. And it's our job to find the standard deviation. Well, to find the standard deviation, you need the variance. The variance is a measurement of spread, and it's found by integrating um, your function times the quantity of x minus mu squared. Mu is the mean, and so we're going to have to find the mean, but uh, once we do find it, we'll find the variance, and then we'll take the square root. You know, the, the thing that we're looking for is called the standard deviation, and that is the the um, the square root of the variance. So this guy is called the variance, and this is what we're looking for. This is our standard deviation. It's a better measurement of spread because it has the units correct. Um, we need to find the mean first. Let's go get that now. We want to find the mean of this probability density function, and it comes from multiplying your function by x and integrating it from minus infinity to infinity. But for us, because our function is 0 up to negative 2 and 0 after 2, then we can only really pay attention to the integral from negative 2 to 2. And we take our PDF function and we multiply it by x. And we have to integrate this. So my advice uh, to do this is to pull out the constant, 3 over 32, and then multiply the x in. So we'll get a, a 4x minus x cubed, and the 3 over 32 comes on the outside. But notice the interval is from minus 2 to 2. Be on the lookout for integrals that are like this from minus a to a, where whatever is on the right side um, the length of the interval on the right side of the y-axis is the same as the length of the interval on the left side of the y-axis. And so this should cause uh, some alarms to go off. You should then go to look at your function that you're integrating and check to see whether it's even or odd. Because when it is, you can simplify things. A uh, polynomial is odd when all the powers are odd and there's no constant. And so we're looking at an odd function. What happens when you integrate an odd function from minus 2 to 2, or any minus a to a? An odd function, the definition of it is that whatever is below the x-axis on one side, the area there, and the area that is above on the other side, cancel each other out. I'm not saying that this graph looks like this. I'm just trying to show you the idea. So, so then we don't even have to do this integral. It's going to turn out that the mean is 0. Okay, and so we take that zero value and we plug it in to get the variance. Uh, let's go to the next slide for that. So the formula for variance is x minus the mean quantity squared multiplied by your function, and you integrate that from minus infinity to infinity. That'll give you the variance. That's called sigma squared. We're in search of sigma, but we first need to get sigma squared. So knowing that the mean is 0, then we can um, integrate this integral here, where we take this function, and it's essentially times x squared. Now, it starts out as minus infinity to infinity, but we know once again that the function is dead, meaning 0 up to neg negative 2 and 0 after 2. So we can really focus our attention just on the interval from negative 2 to 2. Pull the 3 over 32 out, 
and then multiply the x squared in. And so we'll have 4x squared minus x cubed. I'm sorry, x to the fourth. But then once again, notice, same limits of integration, minus a to a. Take a peek inside your, to see if your function is even or odd. And in this case now, it's an even function. Polynomials are even if all the pr powers present are even. And you could even have a constant there. And so this is an even function. So it's not zero like the odd function. What happens, though, is you can, um, you can basically say that whatever's on the left-hand side is on the right-hand side. And so um, it's not because of this PDF graph, because we're not even really integrating the PDF. We're integrating something times the PDF. So the symmetry that's here might not be the same symmetry that ends up in the, in the uh, integration that you get. But this is an even function. So what it allows you to do is take your lower limit and go from basically just the right-hand side of that, go from 0 to 2, and double your result. Okay. It's just easy to deal with the lower limit of 0 especially when you're integrating polynomials. And so we, we desire that. So then what does that do for us? Well, um, this, this is the 2 from doubling, and this lower limit is now 0. So now what we're going to do is uh, cancel and uh, do our integration. And so what we get is... Um, what we get is uh, 4x cubed over 3 and minus x fifth over 5 and we have 3 over 16 on the outside and so then we need to evaluate it at our limits of integration 2 and 0 but of course what we really only care about is 2 so what happens when you plug a 2 in 2 gets cubed which is 8 and 8 times 4 is 32 but that's the same thing as 2 to the fifth so we'll have 32 over 3 minus 32 over 5 with the 3 sixteenths on the outside Please don't multiply 32 times 5 and the other 32 times 3. Take advantage of the fact that they're both 32 and factor that 32 out. You'd much rather deal with 1 third minus 1 fifth than 32 thirds minus 32 fifths. And what's nice about that is it cancels with this 16 and gives you a 2. And then we can multiply these together to give us a 6 on the outside. On the inside, we need a common denominator of 15. So the first fraction is 5 of those fifteenths, and the second fraction is 3 of those fifteenths. So that's just 2 uh, fifteenths. This 6 here, dividing out of 3, gives us a 2 and a 5 here, and then 5 minus 3 is 2. So we get 2 times 2 over 5, or 4 fifths. That's the variance. That's sigma squared. It's not meant to be that the integration gets in the way. And so here we have it. We're in search of sigma, so we take the square root. The square root of 4 fifths is the square root of 4 over the square root of 5. So it's 2 over root 5. You can rationalize if you want, but I don't think it makes it any better algebraically, but it's more uh, legal, I guess. So if you wanted to, you could do this. Um, you'll know what I'm looking for by the multiple choice. This is the uh, rationalized version of it. That is your standard deviation.